What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate the ASP.NET Core Identity Database in .NET Core 6. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into Visual Studio 2022, select Create a New Project, and select ASP.NET Core Web API. And just hit create. I'm going to let mine spin up for a sec and be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into my app settings.json and configure a couple of things. We're going to add my connection string and my app settings. Um, essentially, we have our identity connection. Our database is going to be called identity. It's not created yet. We're going to do that in this video with code first migrations. And our app settings. This is um, going to hold our client secret. Uh, we'll get into this in part two of this uh, video series on creating JSON web tokens. Um, essentially, this just needs to be 16 bytes long, at least 16 bytes long. And so I have 16 characters here. Um, and that's, that's it for this. We're going to also create a class to hold these as a C-sharp uh, POCO class to hold them as C-sharp models. So one other thing I want to do before we get started is um, to go to my application, right click and go to manage NuGet packages, hit browse, and we're going to need entity framework um, core.sql server. So Microsoft entity framework core.sql server, install that. And we are going to be using the command line, so we're going to need entity framework core.tools. So let me install that one. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to need to do is create some identity models. So let me just right click here on our project, add new folder. And I will call it identity models. And so the first class I'm going to add will be called app settings. So right click, add class. And this is simply going to hold um, our two properties here identity connection and secret. So I can just go ahead and add those. That will be my app settings. My next class will be called app user. This one is going to inherit from identity user, and I'll get to that in a second. So let me just create the class first. Oops, I just want to oh, prop string, and we'll call this name. Now I need to inherit from identity user. Um, control dot using Microsoft.ASPNetCore.identity. So go ahead and bring that namespace in. Now let's take a look at this. We'll drill into this. So hit F12 uh, to go into identity user. And let's go into um, the inherited identity user string. And if you take a look at this, these are going to represent um, our table columns for our user table that gets created. So we'll get into more of that in a little bit. So my next class is, um, well, we need a, a user model. So I'm going to add a class and call it uh, user model. And this is going to be used when we um, try to register or log in a user. So I'm just going to add these properties, pretty standard. We have username, password, name, role, and email. Okay, and the next class will be called something for our um, DB context. So I'm going to call this JWT auth we are going to use JSON web tokens um, to test this out in the next, uh, in part two of this video series. So for this, we need to inherit from identity 
DB context. So, I mean, if you're familiar with my previous videos on, um, you know, scaffolding API controllers on the command line and all of that, we're not doing that. We're actually manually creating the class. And now we're going to use, um, we're going to inherit from identity context. So identity DB context, control dot, come down to install package Microsoft.ASP.NET framework core and find and install latest version. Okay, so that takes a second. And what we're also going to need here um, is a constructor. So I want to get the base constructor. So control dot, come down to generate constructor, JWT auth context with options in parentheses and just hit enter. So that would be my constructor. And what we also uh, need to do is uh, create a DB set um, of type our um, app user. So something like public DB set and just pass in app user control dot. Okay. Um, okay. And we'll just call that users get set. And that's it. Now, technically, this is all you would need to do. We are ready. Uh, after one more step, we have to configure our DB context in program.cs, but we're basically ready to generate our tables. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Before I forget, let me just go ahead into our um, program.cs and let's go ahead and register that DB context. So if you like, I'm typically not a big user of regions, but you can, you know, you can put a region in here and just call it identity or something like that and region. Um, if you want to just kind of keep track of all the stuff we're going to be adding over the course of this video series. Um, so um, and, and, and the other thing later on, we can we can talk, you can think about refactoring certain things into methods and, and things like that. But for simplicity's sake, let's just start here. Um, we need to register our DB context. So that is builder.services.addbbcontext. And the type is JWT auth context. So control dot bring in our models namespace. And then our arrow function op options, options dot use SQL server control dot and using Microsoft N80 framework core. And then we can call our connection string dot configuration dot get connection string and that would be identity connection and now we have our um, db context registered so we are ready to actually go to our command line and start our migrations just want to do a quick build build succeeded well, let's go back to our auth context. So we can use this as it is, and it will generate all of our tables for us. I mean, so that's all we actually have left to do for this part one of this series in this video is to generate the tables and show you the tables in SQL Server. Um, what it will do if we keep it like this is it's going to give us default uh, table names. So it's going to be something like ASP.NET users and you know roles and so on right if you want to customize your table names if you don't want to use the default then we have to override the on model creating method so let's see what that is let's go let's drill into this so identity db context hit f12 and let's drill into this identity db context um and let's keep drilling uh, until we find our method. So this is the method that we're going to be overriding. Okay, so 
let me show you how to do that real quick. And this is optional. You don't need to do it. And I will put the code on my GitHub and I'll put a link to that in the description. But so we need, we need a protected override void. And you see it gives us the option right here, which is really nice. And it creates our method. And based on model creating, you need that. And then for uh, your uh, code is basically builder dot entity. See, it's it writes a lot of your code for you, and then just pass in. We need to pass in identity user here. So you're going to need to bring in that namespace using Microsoft ASP.NET Core dot identity and hit enter. Okay, and then we have an arrow function. So entity and we can just uh, call our two table method. So entity dot two table and give it a name and you know uh, user. So that will create our user table. And that will be for our identity user. So it's going to create a user table as opposed to the default, you know, ASP.NET. I think it's ASP.NET users, I think, um, whatever the default name is. And then we would do similarly. So if you wanted to, um, for the role, the user role table, so it would be builder.entity. And then you need to pass in identity role. Whoops. Entity role. And then entity, and then the same thing, entity dot to table, and just give it a name, and then you can call it role. So you can do that for all of your tables. So let me go ahead and I will add the rest of those for you. And like I said, this is totally optional. Um, let you take a look at that. Um, and, you know, like I said, all it's going to do is when we get our database, it's just going to, you know, our table names are going to be user role, user roles, user claims, user logins, role claims, and user tokens, as opposed to the defaults. Okay, just going to do a quick build, control shift B. Now I need to go to my package manager console. So we're going to start our migrations. If you don't have package manager console open, you can go to tools, you get package manager, package manager console. So now I'm going to just use the command add migration, add dash migration, give it a name. I'm going to call it my initial migration and Give it a context, so hyphen for a flag, it starts with a dash, hyphen context, and I'm going to pass in my JWT off context and hit enter. And it's going to do, you see, it created our initial migration class. So, what this is doing, the up method is actually creating our tables. So this is going and creating all of our tables. Now, if we had just used a, you know, a default, or if we were to create another auth context here and, and got rid of, you know, our custom table names and all of that, then it would use the default names in creating all of these tables in this file. So, and it, it similarly, it has a, a down method, and that would be for dropping tables. Okay, so one more thing we need to do, if we come into our database, it's not there yet, let me just show you. We're expecting a database called identity, which we currently do not have. So one more thing we need to do is we need to run the command update dash database and hit enter. And as long as we've got no errors, we see all of our creates. And now if we come back in here, hit databases and hit refresh. Now we see our identity database with all of our tables. 
So it has our roles, role claims, user, user claims. Um, one thing I like to do in my role table, so I don't forget, is just add an ID, which is integer. So, And I'm just going to make this an admin role. So I'm just going to name everything admin, admin across the board. And you'll see that in the next part of this video series, why we need to do that. Okay, so let's let's go over this again. We'll just review this. So we have our auth context, which we manually create, and then we used um, we set up custom table names um, for our identity database, which is optional. We need to inherit from our identity DB context. We need to pass in a DB set of users, which is a an app user class that we need to create that inherits from identity user. You know, the only uh, configuration we needed to do so far in our program.cs was to add our DB context and pretty standard or connection string. So that's all we need to do to get up and running. In part two of this video series, I will show you how to um, add JWT authentication and uh, create an, an API controller um, for using Swagger to test the register, you know, registering a new user and logging in and creating a JSON web token. So anyway, that does it for today's video. Like I said, I will post all this code on my GitHub and uh, Please, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave any comments down below, and I will see you next time.